Yesterday was a long day for me. We had a polling station here, and they like to start early. The poll workers were here at 5.30 to set up the voting machines, and so I was here before 5.30 to let them in. And most of the day, I mean, they did their own thing, and it worked really well. They were really pleased that we had this place. There are people from our local neighborhood who said they had never been in this building. That alone should make us a little worried, but we'll work on that later. I kind of let them go about their business, but periodically I happened to be in the area when they were doing something. And early in the day, they all had to recite an oath. I've never worked at a polling station, so I didn't know this, that everybody who works there has to swear an oath as part of their job. And so I was in the kitchen, and they were doing this, and they got started. And like a good prayer, in my opinion, a good oath should be short. Get in, say what you need to say, and get out. But this oath was a full page. They kept on reading and reading and reading, and eventually I had to go out and say, do you guys have to memorize this or something? It, it, it was impossible to imagine that they would have had any memory of what it was they had just said. I was moved to wonder whether they had to read the whole thing for it to work or if someone was miraculously st struck speechless after the first 200 words, would the rest count? But apparently they made through it and no one raised a protest that they had not done their job, so I guess everything worked out. I have kind of the same reaction when I hear this thing this morning, both in the Acts reading and in the gospel, this idea that there is baptism with water and baptism with the Holy Spirit. We as Episcopalians kind of try to split the difference, as we often do. When we baptize someone with water, we say you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. And that's how we get around that whole are you baptized with the Holy Spirit thing. Which is not to say that there are not some other Christians who look at it very differently, to include some Episcopalians, to include some former members of St. Thomas's, who are very proud of the fact that they feel they have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and can tell you the day and the minute when that happened to them. Now, I'll confess to you, I've always felt a little uncomfortable with that, in part because I've never had that experience. I never have felt like the Holy Spirit was suddenly poured out on me and I was prophesying and, and speaking in tongues and doing those things that are understood to be the gifts of the Spirit. On the other hand, I'm, I'm not sure I would want all of the things that some people claim to have. Uh, when I went to work at the big hospital in Charlotte, when I had just gotten out of my PhD program, I was walking through the emergency room one day and there were two emergency room doctors walking in front of me and the one, I came into this conversation in the middle, which is the only way you could do it. The one was saying to the other, and I told him, if he comes back one more time from the snake handling, I'm not going to fix him next time. <laughs> okay, I know, I know where I live now. So part of it probably is just that it hasn't been my experience. But part of it, I think, is also the way that it can become a way that we're divided one from another one who has the gift of the Spirit, and one who does not. And even more than that, I'm suspicious of anything where I is prominent in the sentence. I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I wonder how much of that becomes about me and not really about God. I think there's a clue to where we ought to be looking in the Acts lesson. Sometimes there are these weird throwaway lines that are in these lessons that we, we don't know why they're there. We read them anyway. At one point when Paul's talking about that he writes with his own handwriting, and that's great. So what? What does that tell us spiritually? This time, I think there's a point. The lesson ends by saying there were about 12 of them. Now, 12, of course, is always kind of a number that makes you stop and notice. But in this case, the whole point for me is that it's more than just one. They were baptized together, and together they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, whatever that may mean. I think the fulfillment of what happens to us in water baptism is what happens to us together as we go through the rest of our spiritual life. It's the rest of the oath that we might not get around to reciting on that first occasion, but that continues to be poured out on us through the rest of our lives and is poured out on us only when we are together. There is something about the Holy Spirit moving among us 
that seems to be much more powerful than what any of us experiences individually of it. So it gives me a little bit of comfort, perhaps, to imagine that I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit by all of the other Christians I have known through my life, all the times I have been with them, all the things we have done and experienced together. That, I think, is the fulfillment of God's promise of baptism for you and for me, that if we will be faithful with one another, hang in there as a Christian community, the Holy Spirit will do more through us and because of us, occasionally even despite us, than we can imagine or ask or pray for or even notice while it is happening. May it be the will of God we will at least see it in the rearview mirror as I think I have. We'll all get to the end of the oath and we will all see what it is that God has done for all of us, for all of humanity. Amen.